what a wonderful Lord we have. You know, I've been just thinking about a beautiful song we all love. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Isn't it wonderful to serve the Lord? So precious. Today I'm, I'm teaching on the seven sprinklings or sheddings of the blood of Jesus. And once we begin to understand that sevenfold shedding of the blood, it's a, it'll change our life. So thank you for joining me today. And Lord, thank you again for your wonderful word. And we come today in your most precious and holy name. We ask, Lord, for a fresh touch on our life. In Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. I began teaching on applying the blood yesterday. And I continue today by talking about the sevenfold sheddings of blood, which we read about in Leviticus 16, from verse 11 to 14, when Moses was commanded that the blood has to be sprinkled by, by Aaron over the mercy seat. And the Lord fulfilled it because, see, it was sprinkled seven times over the mercy seat. And the Lord shed his blood seven times in Scripture. The first is in Luke. Let's go to Luke chapter 22. And we're going to read together verse 44. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And being in an agony, he was in such deep agony that his sweat became blood. Why? So that we would be healed from within. Our own soul would be healed. The Bible commands that we be made whole. And only by the blood can we be whole. Hallelujah. Jesus said, be made whole. That's a command. And you and I will be made whole when we understand the work of Calvary and the work of the blood of Jesus. And I'll be dealing with and teaching on how to apply the blood you know, there are seven sheddings of blood, but there are you know, also seven applications of the blood mentioned in the New Testament. Because it says, and they overcame him, meaning the enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their life even unto death. And I'm going to explain that to you. God willing, tomorrow. If not, it'll be the day after because there's so much information I'm going to give you here that's so vital to understand. So we're talking now about first the sevenfold sheddings or sprinklings of the blood of Jesus. First, in Gethsemane for our soul. Now, and for the healing of our being. And then let's, let's look at Matthew. And this is so powerful here. Matthew 26, and I'm going to read. Let's go to verse 67. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands. Now, that word buffeted means beat him. And here we see the word smote or struck him with the palms of their hands. But actually the Hebrew says with the rods of their hands. And that actually uh, goes in line with Micah chapter 5. Let's go to Micah chapter 5. So the Lord was struck with rods, with rods, and it says so. In Micah 5, verse 1, Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. And that is the second time we see the blood was shed from his precious face. 
in Matthew 26, 67, how they struck him, they beat him with a rod, and so he, the blood was shed because of that, the precious holy blood of the Son of God. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, beat him, and they smote him, they struck him with the rods of their hands. Wonderful Jesus, wonderful Savior. And the blood was shed. And then in Isaiah 50, verse 6, you know, the Bible says his face was marred more than any man. And when you read this, you begin to see what happened. I gave my back to the smiters. Wow. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. Wow. That plucked off the hair. So they beat his precious face with rods. And now they pulled his beard off. And that's why Isaiah said, no beauty we should, we should desire in him. Marred more than any man in his face and his form. And here we see the second shedding of blood. That the Lord's face was so beaten by his enemies, struck him with a rod, pulling his precious beard off, that his face no longer looked human. And this is all before the cross. This is in the house of Caiaphas. So first in Gethsemane, the blood was shed. Yeah, you know what? I'm really having a hard time holding the tears because when you think about the love of God, when you think about the love of Jesus, in Acts 20, you know, the blood of God purchased us. The blood of God was the price for our salvation. The love of God that Jesus would stand there in the house of Caiaphas. Uh, the third shedding of blood is mentioned in Matthew 27. And I want you to go with me to all these scriptures I'm giving you. And in verse 26, it says this, Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, when he scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. But the Lord was scourged first or flogged with a scourge. Now, his back was, was whipped, scourged. The instrument of scourging in those days was an instrument of torture in that whip, in the lashes, were pieces of metal. And they, they were placed there deliberately by the Romans to tear the flesh open. And the flesh of the Lord was torn open. And I just showed you the scripture. We'll see it one more time in Isaiah chapter 50. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you. Verse 6, I gave my back to those who struck me. His back was torn. His body was torn. His flesh opened by the metal pieces. And in some cases, I also read where they also put bones, sharp bones of animals on those whips. So imagine the Lord was, was, was beaten, was whipped with a whip that had many strips to it and they would put in the metal and in some, in some writings it says they also put bones and they would tie knots uh, on, each, on each end so they would not fall off and these, these metals would roll like that with, with, with like nails in them and tear the flesh off. And that's why Isaiah said, that he was marred 
in his face and his form more than any man. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Now, notice something here in verse 6. I gave my back. The Lord gave his back. He offered his back by his own free will and choice. He did not struggle. He gave his back to those who struck him. His own free will. It was his choice to give his back. He did not struggle. He did not resist. He he did not protest. He gave his back to those who struck him. That's his love, isn't it? And so that is the third shedding of blood for our health and our healing. So the first time in Gethsemane, to heal your soul. The second shedding of blood, so you would have his image one day. We shall be like him. We shall look like him. And then for our healing, where his back was struck, his flesh was torn. And now the fourth shedding of blood. Let's go back to Matthew 27. And Matthew gives that in such a beautiful order. So let's begin at verse 27 of Matthew 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. There's a few things I'm gonna share with you. In verse 28, it says they put a scarlet robe upon him. I saw something so powerful today that really, really moved me deeply. In Genesis 3.18, can you go to that with me? You'll really be blessed by this. In Genesis 3.18, God said, when Adam fell, He says, because of your sin, he said, you will eat. He said, cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow will you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. You know what I found? That that, that the color of a thistle, because here it says, thorns and thistles, The color of a thistle is the same color of the robe that they put on him. It's a scarlet color. So Jesus took the curse that was placed on the planet because God says, cursed is the ground for your sake. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And what did they put upon the Lord's head? Thorns. What did he wear? The color of the thistles, the curse in Genesis. I've never heard it even taught ever. But today when I discovered it, I thought, oh dear Lord, it's the same color. The thistle is the same color of the robe. Let's go back to Matthew because I'm going to show you something else really powerful. Oh, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Savior. Okay, let's go back to Matthew 27. And one more time, we're going to look at verse 27 and and on. And so it says, And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, in verse 29, that word plaited is a very powerful word. It means twisted. And then it says that they put it on his head. And if you look up the word put in the Greek, it's 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 not just put, it is to make an assault, to make an assault, to attack one, to press it 
into his skull, basically. So they not only put the robe, the scarlet robe on him, that is connected to the verse, to the curse in Genesis, but now they put the thorns, the crown of thorns upon his head. And they literally forced the thorns. In Israel, if you ever see thorns, they, they have very long um, uh, spikes to them. Uh, or, uh, uh, yes, I, I think that's, that's the right name for it. They're quite long. And also, they are so sharp that they are hard like nails. They're like sharp like nails. So here... They 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 they're, they're, they have long spikes on them, very hard, as hard as nails, very sharp, and they struck him. They struck that that crown of thorns into his precious head. Wow! They made an assault. The the Hebrew says an assault, or or the Greek says I should say to make an assault on one. They pressed down the thorns into his scalp penetrated the scalp and large amounts of blood flowed out. Can we go back and look at verse 30 now? Look look at this too. And they spit upon him. Notice the scene, will you? The crown of thorns are now in his skull. They begin to spit on him. Now they took a reed or a rod is the actual word. They took a rod and smote him on the head. And that's exactly what we see in Isaiah 52. Wow. Not only did they spit on him, that they smote him on the head again with a reed or a rod because it's the, it's the Greek word kalamos. And the word kalamos means rod. Not just read, but an actual rod. Holy is your name, Lord. Holy is your name, Lord. Blessed be your name, Jesus. I worship you, Redeemer. I worship you, Savior. And here, I'm looking up here in the, in the Strongs. It says a rod, a measuring reed or rod. So think about what the Lord what our precious Redeemer looked like when they had beaten his face, tore the beard off, and then later struck him over the crown of thorns with a rod. By this time, he was unrecognizable as a man. The first shedding of blood is Gethsemane, the second shedding of blood, his face beaten with a rod, his beard pulled. The third shedding, they whipped his body with metal and bones on those whips and tore his flesh. And the fourth shedding of blood, the crown of thorns, upon his precious head. Wow. Oh. And then in Matthew 27, 35, it says, and they crucified him. The fifth shedding of blood was when they nailed his hands to the cross. Why? Well, first of all, I said earlier, the blood was shed in Gethsemane for the healing of our soul, and then for the healing of our image, and then for the healing of our bodies. And then for the healing of our minds with the thorns upon his precious skull. And now that our work would be accepted. That we would, when we minister and work for the Lord, that our hands representing work would be accepted. That the blood was shed from his hands. Hallelujah. I can feel the anointing just talking to you about this. And then his feet... And that's the sixth shedding of blood. Number five, his hands. Number six, his feet. And his feet speak of our walk, that you and I can walk with the Lord now because he was crucified. 
But I want to I want to I want to focus a little more on the seventh. And you do remember, just before I go on, in Psalm twenty two sixteen, they pierced my hands and my feet in fulfilling the prophecy of the Old Testament. How wonderful. How precious. Now, the seventh was his side. Let's go to John 19. I pray this is blessing you as it is blessing me even now. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. Let me just read this part. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and, and that they might be taken away. Why? In order that they might die, because when they would break their legs, they were, the, the individual on the cross could no longer breathe. Because to breathe... You have to pull up and use your legs to help you to pull up. Without your legs uh, being still there, there in in one piece, you could not pull up your body to breathe. And that's how they would they they would make sure that they would die quickly. When they came to the Lord, the Bible says, "Here's what it says in verse thirty two and thirty three. Then came the soldiers. I'm reading John nineteen. Then came the soldiers." and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs, fulfilling Psalm 34, 20, and other scriptures, by the way. And in Psalm 34, verse 20, and I don't know that you ever saw this in the Bible. It's also a fulfillment, by the way, of a prophecy in Exodus 12. There are 32 prophecies that were fulfilled on the cross in Exodus chapter 12. In Exodus chapter 12. There are 32 prophecies. And now in Psalm 34 and verse 20 it says, He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. So you know when you read verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. It's talking about the Messiah. But the Lord delivers him the Messiah, the Lord, out of them all. He keeps all his bones. And I know we have taken that precious verse to apply to us, which, of course, it does. Because many are the afflictions of every righteous person. But the Lord delivers us from all of them. But in this specific verse, it's talking about the Lord. And he keeps all his bones. That's the Lord. Not one of them is broken. Fulfilled in John. And so, if you go back now, to John one more time. This is so precious, people of God. Okay, John 19, one more time. And verse, let's just go back to that precious portion there. And now it says, uh, and let's go back here. But one of the soldiers with a, uh, this is verse 34. One of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. So the soldiers wanted, or the soldier, wanted to make to make sure that the Lord was dead, and he pierced his side. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, meaning John. Thank you, Jesus. And he knoweth that he saith true, that you might believe. And then in verse 36 and 37, for these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. That's in Psalm 34. Of course, I just give it to you. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. That's in Zechariah 12 and verse 10. Blessed be his holy name forever. The seven sheddings of blood. And let me also read with you Zechariah chapter 12. Because I think it's really important that you really underline these in your Bibles. These are prophecies that were fulfilled in the life of the Lord. 
and I will pour upon the house, verse 10, I will pour upon the house of David, upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication, of supplication. They shall look upon me whom they have pierced. And that was fulfilled in John 19. And why his, they pierced his side that the church might be born. In that precious saying, so the blood was shed in Gethsemane for our souls to be healed. The blood was shed from his face that we should look like him. From his back that we might be made whole. From his head that we might have his mind. From his hands our work to be accepted. From his feet our walk to be established. From his side that we might be born again. To him be all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Tomorrow I'm, con- I'm, I'm going to continue on how to apply the blood and what Revelation 12, 11 means. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That's very important that we understand what the word of their testimony is. And why does it say and they love not their life unto death. Who qualifies to apply the blood? And there are seven revelations of applying the blood in the New Testament. Don't miss tomorrow, you're gonna absolutely be thrilled with the teaching. I pray this has blessed you today. And dear Lord, I pray, open our eyes that we might behold wondrous things out of your word. To you be all the glory and honor and praise. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. I'm going to ask you to give now to the Lord's work because he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of honor. Honor the Lord with your substance, the Bible says, and the first fruits of your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and your presses burst out with new wine. I want God to, to bless you with wealth from heaven, like he blessed Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and his people, to bless you with wealth from heaven that you will never lose. And I told you yesterday, there's a big difference between worldly riches and wealth from heaven, divine wealth, that God only gives. People can make money on earth, they can get riches by their working and their gifts and talents and so forth, but they can also lose it because it says that if people get riches through vanity in Proverbs 13, it will be diminished or lost. But we cannot lose the wealth God gives us. And how do we get that? By planting, by sowing. So the world gets their money by working. We get the wealth by planting, by sowing. That's what happened with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They didn't work for it. God gave that to them. Think God gave the wealth of Pharaoh to Abraham. God gave the wealth of Abimelech to Isaac. God gave the wealth of Laban to Jacob because they were planters. They knew how to sow seed. Let's do it. And that will bless your tomorrow in ways that there's no way to describe it. So Lord, bless them as they plant into your work as they sow seed into your gospel. Bless them, Lord, there be no lack in their life ever. In Jesus' name, and protect them from the future and from harm. Amen. All right, you can sow your seed right now by going to our website, which is the simplest, bennyhan.org. Or you can sow on the platform that you're watching me on, if you know how, or just simply text BHM457 Seven, seven. But the quickest way and the best way, on our website, bennyhin.org. You can also send it through the mail. The address is right on the screen for you through the mail. All right. Much love and thank you for being with me. And don't miss tomorrow and tell your friends and share these teachings, please, from yesterday and today. Share them with your friends on social media because we need to understand the power of the blood and how to apply the blood. And tomorrow, how do we apply? I'll see you then. 
bye bye This is your personal invitation to come and celebrate with us this December. 48 years of ministry for the glory of our wonderful Lord Jesus. And I want you to come and celebrate the goodness of the Lord, December 3rd. It's also my birthday, I'll turn 70. And Christmas, all in one beautiful banquet, but especially to celebrate the goodness of the Lord Jesus in all of our lives. I'm so grateful to the Lord for what he has done in 48 years. So would you join me December 3rd in Dallas at the Rich Carlton at 7 p.m. for a wonderful banquet. For more information, please go to our website and register. I want to see you there. I'm inviting you personally. I'll 